Hi, and welcome to the 10 square meter workshop. As I continue my journey into hard woodworking, you know the sort of thing, dovetails, etc., I realise I need quite a few tools and accessories. And I could buy them, of course, but it's more fun to make them. So today I'm going to be making four things. A marking knife, a dovetail gauge, a saw guide, and a shorn shim. Not know what one of those is? Hmm, neither did I. Another thing that when you see it, you know you want it, mm, but not enough to buy it. So let's get started. The first item would be the marking knife. And I'm going to use this old thread chaser to make it. It's tool steel, so ideal. Wonderful what comes out of the scrap box. A few minutes with a grinder. I have the profile I want. Now I need to shape the blade. With a basic blade shape ground, it's time to heat treat it before final honing. First cherry red and quench. I then clean it up enough so I can see the colours. I'm aiming for straw, light straw colour. It's run to blue at the tip. But that will do. Cleaned up, I shall leave the final grind until after I've made the handle, which I shall make out of this piece of zebra wood. First I cut a strip off, sawed it in two, and then sanded the inner faces. I can then set this up in the mill and cut the slot for the blade. Two passes at a slightly different angle, and the blade is a good tight fit. With both slots made, I can flood with glue and clamp firmly together. With the glue set, I can start to shape the handle. I use my belt sander to get the profiles in both planes right. This is all about fit in the hand rather than appearance. And I then knock back the edges with a sanding block. I didn't want to overdo this. I want to feel the squareness in my hand. It helps align the blade. Then it's up through the grades with my Abranet sanding pads. And finally, a couple of light coats of tongue oil. Although this is quite a small tool, the amount of steel in it gives it a heft. It makes it very, very comfortable in the hand. And a very positive feel. And so, another essential woodworking tool made. The second item is the dovetail gauge. Or rather a pair of them. The dovetail marking gauge is one of the easiest things to make. I shall be making it out of this piece of scrap aluminium angle. Cut approximately to length, I then used angle blocks that added up to 8 degrees to set it at that angle. Clamp tight, I can now mill it. Then all I have to do is mill it flat. Flip it over and repeat, like so. Clean up and deburr, and stamp an 8 on it. in case I make others. And I have an 8 degree dovetail gauge. I then made another one facing the other way for marking near the edges. The third item is a saw guide for when you're cutting dovetails. I'm going to make this out of a piece of 90mm square bar. First I cut off a 38mm length and face off one end in the mill. before machining a 3mm step in the end. None of these dimensions are critical as long as everything is square and parallel. 
I then repeated this for the other end. The one thing that does need to be accurate is the angle. In here I'm using a pair of angle blocks to set 8 degrees. With it clamped at that angle I can face off the top. Here we are about halfway there and here it is almost all the way. I've left a little bit at the end because I'm going to notch those to allow for the wider kerf on the saw. And here you can see it's 150 microns lower at the two ends. I then flipped it over and did the same on the other side. Stamp it with an 8 so there's no confusion. And it's done. So what's it for? Well when you're cutting a dovetail you line your saw up in the mark, put this against it and it helps you maintain exactly the right angle just to start the cut. Once you're away of course you can follow the line. It works for both sloping that way, sloping the other way and of course square. And this is where the groove comes for the care for the blade. The fourth and last item is that shorn shim. And this is what a shorn shim looks like. It's a brass block with a step, different one on four sides, and it's used to set the offset when laying out a dovetail to allow for the thickness of the saw blade. And it has four different thicknesses, so you can match any saw. The original was three quarters of an inch square. I don't have any square brass, but I do have some one inch round. And it's in a mill, so I'll just mill it square. I'm holding the brass and the V groove in the vise, and that's good enough for this. The only important dimension here is the step size. And because I'm doing it all in one setup, I don't need to worry about anything else but the amount of Z travel that I use to cut the step. First I machined off 3.7 millimeters. The distance I calculated would get it almost square. The curve of my saw is 0.5 millimeters. So I'm going to machine the first one 30 micron under that. And that's the first one done. Three more to go. For the rest I shall be using a packer against the flat face. The last side is done using between the jaws and parallels in the normal way. With all the faces milled it's inked to the lathe to face off the end. And then I can part it off. Taking gentle cuts, because although it is brass, it's also square. I shall cut through the last couple of millimetres with that jack saw because I don't want to try and catch a square piece nor do I want to damage the corners. Here we go. With the verticals cut 
I place one board on top of the other and offset them sideways at the bottom to allow for the thickness of the saw cut. Make sure it's flush. And then mark with the saw just the same curve. It's always used on the master side, one way up to shift it one way and the other way up the other way so you can cut both sides of the tail. So that's the four items, or five as it turned out, that I will need. Well that's all for this time, but I shall be putting these items to use because I'm just about to start my big build. Why not subscribe so you don't miss it. See you then, bye for now.